Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. Let's talk about some gas laws in this video. In gases, there is a theory which is considered extremely critical and that theory is called as kinetic molecular theory. So what is the theory about? It talks about the molecules and their behavior. So let's take one by one each of them important point. The first point is all the gas molecules which are present the separation is much larger than the actual molecules and I remember that because the molecules in gases are arranged loosely compared to solids remember liquids are loose and in gases they are much more loose obviously that leaves much bigger separation then second thing is the particles in gases are constantly in motion and they move in random direction but they always move in straight line whichever way they are going all right next thing is the particles when they are moving of course they bump into other particles so they end up having collisions these collisions are extremely frequently taking place but all the collisions are elastic what do elastic means that means there is no energy gained or lost when this collision takes place. Next on after that is particles in the gas do not have any attraction or repulsion. They do not sense any inner molecular forces. And the last and important one is since they all are moving they possess kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy, the average of that is a measure of temperature. So, let me get it straight. If energy goes up, if particles are moving faster, what's going to happen to temperature? Temperature will also go up. And of course, if energy goes down, it will go down. Okay. There are some units which are extremely important in gas laws. So let's quickly have a look at those. Pressure, we can have all these units for pressure. Atmosphere, torr, kilopascal, millimeter of mercury and PSI. They all are valid as long as you are using the units consistently in gas laws in that particular problem. Alright, coming to volume. Volume could be liter, could be milliliter could be cubic centimeter or cube could be cubic feet. All these are units of volume which are acceptable. Temperature, look at this. The only unit which is acceptable for gas laws is Kelvin. And then amount, when we talk about amount, sure we can use grams, but finally when we have gas laws, what we use is moles and usually N is the letter we use for denoting the number of moles there. Okay, how do we convert Celsius to Kelvin? I hope you all remember that. I remember that Charlie and Kevin are two brothers. Kevin is the older brother and that's why Kelvin or Kevin will be taller. So in a way you can say if this is Kevin, Kevin is taller than Charlie by 273. So always you are going to add 273 to Celsius when we go to Kelvin. When we go to Celsius, that is the younger brother, so you are going to subtract 273 and you end up getting Celsius. And when we do the problems, you will probably get more familiar using this conversion. Next thing about the units for pressure and volume. All these are units for pressure and these are conversion factors to keep in mind. So in case if we have to convert, we know the factors. And then for volume, you have to make sure whichever unit we use, it is same on both sides. Then there are STP conditions, which means standard temperature and pressure. What are those standard temperature and pressure conditions? The standard temperature is always 0 degree Celsius. So how much is that into Kelvin? Kelvin, Kevin. So it's an older brother. So it's 0 plus 273 and you got it. 
that will be 273 Kelvin. And for pressure, it's one atmosphere or actually that is equal to all these different units. So it could be technically be equal to either one of those. Okay. Let's actually talk, discuss about some gas laws. And look at that. We have all these bunch of gas laws. So what are those? And I'm going to start with the final one. There are some variables in gas laws. And let me write down the variables. We have N. Then we have pressure, volume and temperature. These are the important variables. N stands for number of moles. P is pressure, V is volume and T is temperature. Of course in Kelvin, degrees Kelvin there. So when we start with the combined gas law, let me go to the combined gas law formula and that is P1 V1 over N1 T1 is equal to P2 V2 over N2 T2. Okay? And you can probably sing it to yourself. P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals P2 V2 over N2 T2. Okay. So what are the variables which we have here? Practically we can have all these N, P, V and T. All these could be variables. So in combined gas law, we really don't have a particular value to be constant and there is no math relationship. Uh, let's go to Avogadro's. This is a unique gas law. In Avogadro's, we always indicate that we have V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. So what does it say? It tells you that if N goes up, volume goes up too. And then we can write down V and N. These are two variables which we have. What could be the control one? If you look at the formula in the combined gas law, whichever is remaining will be constant here. That means we will have pressure constant and we will have temperature constant. And now beyond that afterwards, it's extremely simple. For each of that, if you remember what is constant, you can derive the gas law. For Boyle's law, it is temperature constant. For Charles law, it is pressure constant. And for Gay-Lussac's law, it is volume constant. Now keep in mind, along with all of that, we are also going to keep the number of moles n also constant. So if you have all these constant, from this equation, we can remove those constant and we can easily derive the formula for each of these, which is here P1 V1 equals P2 V2 for boils. Then we have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 for Charles and for Gay-Lussac's we get P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So which one is the variable? The variables in this case will be P and V, this will be V and T and this will be P and T. What's the math relationship? Look at this. The product P1 V1 equals P2 V2 that means if pressure is going to go up, volume better go down because the product is same. In case of Charles, if V1 goes up, that means T1 must go up or if they both go down, I mean if volume goes down, temperature goes down too. And in case of Gay-Lussac's, if pressure goes up, then temperature must be also going up. So look at that. We actually already discussed all these different gas laws. Now let's see how we apply gas laws in our daily life. Think about that. There are hot air balloons. How exactly hot air balloons work? In hot air, uh, air balloons, there is heat. Because of heat, air expands. Okay. So if air expands, what increases? Volume goes up. And if volume goes up, then what is density? Density is mass over volume. So density is going to decrease. And then if density is less, that makes 
a hot air balloon float. All right. If you sit in a closed bag of potato chips, it pops. Why? When we sit on the bag of potato chips, volume goes down. If volume goes down, what must be increasing? Pressure must be increasing. And if pressure increases, of course, it will result in popping the bag. Okay, if you are taking a bag of potato on the plane, when we are in air, up in the air, the pressure there is decreasing. So, if pressure is decreasing using Boyle's law, what do we get? We get volume will be going up. If volume goes up, it will expand. When we check the tire pressure for our cars in winter and summer, what happens? In summer, temperature is already higher. If temperature is higher, the chances are there will be volume will be same. Okay, The pressure is going to go up. And if the pressure goes up, then the tires can explode. And in winter, temperature is lower. So technically, pressure can be lower. And if it's a low pressure, we may not get good gas mileage. And there could be many, many more examples of gas laws. But it just tells you how gas laws are closely related to our daily life. So in our next videos, we are going to learn more about some gas law problems and calculations. Until then, bye-bye.